Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to take part in this event and uh, to speak on advances and challenges for Rio Plus 20. Just as the Portuguese language website for the Rio Plus 20 conference is launching. Uh, let me express my special appreciation to Mr. To, to Madam Sheila uh, Pimentel, the president of the President Humanita, the Brazilian NGO, which has sponsored the Portuguese version of the website. I also thank Mr. Suma, UNIC director in Rio. You have built an important bridge between Humanita and our Rio Plus 20 website, web team in New York. And around the globe, some 237 million people speak Portuguese as a native or second language. Portuguese is the sixth most widely spoken language in the world. You know which one is the biggest? Chinese. And so, it is most fitting that the Rio Plus 20 conference has a website in Portuguese, the language, language of our host country. The Rio Plus 20 website is the doorway to broad-based grassroots participation in the Rio Plus 20 preparatory process. Now, let me update you on just where we stand in this process. We are now seven months away from the conference. We just passed November the 1st, the deadline for inputs to the compilation text. We received some 643 submissions, 73 from member states, four from political groups, four from regional preparatory meetings, 68 from United Nations entities and international I IGOs, and 494 from major groups of society. I don't know, you know, my director already calculated almost 80% per of contributions are from NGOs. All inputs have been posted on the Rio Plus 20 website. The overwhelming number of contributions come from the major groups. This shows the strong grassroots interest in a successful conference. I thank those of you from the major groups for sharing information about your important work. I encourage you to keep populating the Real Plus 20 website. Use other social media to help create a buzz around the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, in preparation for the conference, regional meetings have been held in San Diego, Cairo, Seoul, and Addis. Thematic meetings related to the conference have also been held in Seoul, Beijing, New Delhi, Bonn, Warsaw, Oslo, Ramatgan, and Copenhagen. In addition, meetings are also planned for Geneva, Monaco, Palo Alto, and this is not a complete listing. All these preparatory meetings, including the PRACONS and intersessionals, have served multiple purposes. They have deepened our understanding of the key issues involved, revealed different approaches to the same goal and heightened the appreciation of challenges on the path to sustainable development. What then should the real past 20 mean for the world? Foremost, it should lay a foundation for the following economic stability coupled with the dynamic growth. <coughs> Social protection New jobs in green economy, economic sector, and the protection of the natural resource base. In short, Rio Plus 20 must integrate 
the economic, social and environmental pillars of sustainable development. Second, Rio Plus 20 must address the major gaps since 1992, namely the implementation of the sustainable development agenda beginning with Agenda 21. And third, it should lead to coherent policies and programs at all levels. These three keywords, integration, implementation, and coherence, should apply equally to the outcome of Rio and to its follow-up. Rio must be relevant in the substantive areas as well as in the institutional follow-up. Dear friends, the theme of green economy in the context of sustainable development and poverty eradication has generated considerable debate. Some suggest that it is important to first consider what real prosperity is not. It is not a top-down imposition of cookie cutter, one size fits all mode of development. It's not an excuse for new forms of green protectionism or aid conditionality. It is not a device for establishing corporate control over our natural world. Neither is it an excuse for business as usual in public and private sector management. Rather, Green economy is a new way of approaching economic decision making in both the public and private sector. A green economy values nature and it appreciates the multiple ways nature contributes to human well-being. A green economy puts social concerns front and center. It contributes to poverty eradication, employment, creation, and social inclusion. One interesting, I interesting idea that has emerged is to have a green economy roadmap. Well, that's the proposal from the EU. <clears throat> I like it, personally, but I cannot decide it, you know. Such a roadmap with clear goals, objectives, and timelines could be a useful product of Rio Plus 20. Also being proposed as part of the roadmap is a toolkit of good practices and lessons learned, as well as a process for assessing progress on sustainable development. There has also been continuing interest in sustainable development goals, SDGs to assess progress on the road to sustainable development. These proposed goals will obviously need to be balanced, emphasizing integration of the three pillars of sustainable development. Furthermore, discussions about SDGs, sustainable development goals, needs to be coordinated with current discussions on the post-2015 development agenda. Most of us believe that sustainable development goals should incorporate the uncompleted MDGs. As the preparation for the Rio Plus 20 gain momentum, I would like to bring to your attention a tentative list of seven priority areas identified by stakeholders in the preparatory committee meetings. These include combating poverty, including through green jobs and promoting social inclusion. Two, advancing food security and sustainable agriculture. Three, sound water management. Four, energy access, including from renewable sources as well as efficiency and sustainability. Five, sustainable cities. Six, management of oceans or blue economy. Seven, improving 
resilience and disaster preparedness. A few other priority areas are emerging from the submissions to the compilation text, such as biodiversity, forests, and desertification. Cross-cutting themes include climate change, sustainable consumption and production, means of implementation, that is technology, financing, and capacity building, as well as gender and education. I encourage you to, sub to submit concrete proposals on these priority areas. As you know, the General Assembly Resolution has requested for an adoption of a politically focused outcome at Rio Plus 20 conference. So we really need focused outcome. Those are the focused air priority areas emerged you know, in the preparatory process, as I underlined earlier. Now, let me turn to the second theme for Rio Plus 20, the institutional framework for sustainable development. A number of proposals have emerged, including strengthening UNAP, United Nations Environment Program, and its possible elevation to a specialized agency and establishment of World Environment Organization. There has also been a deep interest in the creation of Sustainable Development Council, along with strengthening of Commission for Sustainable Development and ECOSOC. At a regional level, there is interest in strengthening United Nations regional commissions, as well as creating closer cooperation among regional UN entities other regional entities and the regional banks. At the national level, there is a need to ensure that integration is at the heart of national decision making and the system of ministries. The participatory role of national stakeholders must also be enhanced. In the UN system, we are asked to strengthen our contribution, coordination, and coherence. In particular, this could be through the delivering as one modality. The next step in the real post process will be the second intersessional meeting. This will be held in New York from 15th to 16th December. Please watch very carefully for the proceedings of this 15, 16 December. It will be, well, of course, that meeting is going to decide to, 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 to decide what should be the format, the structure of uh, the outcome paper. Right now, we don't know. Of course, discussions will be informed by the compilation text. The text is now available on the Rio President website. The intercessional will provide an important opportunity to comment on the structure, format, and content of the outcome document. You know, I, I don't believe God, okay, but I wish God will bless us. <laughs> we will be able to reach agreement at least on the format, structure, and the content of outcome paper. The details can be negotiated. But these comments will help the, the co-chair to draft the first negotiating text, what we call zero draft, by mid-January 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, let me stress a sense of unity as we go forward. I invite those of you from the major groups and the media to help further define the meaning of partnerships. How can we all play a role in monitoring progress and implementing sustainable development? Yes, 
Rio Plus 20 is primarily a conference of member states, but major groups and the media are essential partners. We need you to mobilize your constituencies and impress on heads of state and government that they must attend the Rio Plus 20 in person. We need you to let your governments know of your high expectations for the conference. We need your insights on how to deliver sustainable development. And finally, after the buzz of conference dies down, we need you to stay the course. Thank you.